UN TV exclusive, an eyewitness recalls seeing six suspicious motorcycle riding men around Barangay Burgos in Daraga Albay prior to Congressman Rodel Batocabes shooting. Comelec Eyes placing Daraga Albay under its control as recommended by President Rodrigo Duterte. And the Tropical Depression Usman to intensify to Tropical Storm before making a landfall in eastern Samar on a Friday. Good evening. A witness to the killing of Ako Bicol Party List Representative Rodel Batocabe says a six motorcycle riding men were seen lurking around Barangay Burgos in Daraga Albay prior to the shooting incident. A reenactment conducted by police investigators at the crime scene also confirms that Batocabe was shot at a close range. My Bermudez tells us why in this exclusive report. Another eyewitness shared her experience in the afternoon of December 22 when a Cobicol Party List representative Rodel Batocabe and his police aide were killed. Pia, not her real name, was among the senior citizens who received the gift pack from Batocabe's gift-giving event in Barangay Burgos in the municipality of Daraga. Pia recalled that prior to the shooting, she was inside a chapel some 200 meters away from the covered court where the event was being held. From where she was, she noticed six men acting suspiciously near the venue. The six men looked very unfamiliar, she said. Nung nandun ako sa loob ng simbahan, may nakita akong mga nagpakamotor. Anim sila. Yung, yung, yung tatlo parang nakasuot ng mga itim sa tingin ko. Hindi, taga, hindi mga taga rito yun. Kasi parang yun lang pakakita ko sa kanila. Yung parang mga payat lang sila. Payat. Medyo, hindi eh, naman masyado. Uh, mga matatangkan. Barangay Burgos is a small town with only around 700 people. And Pia is certain that she knows each of the residents in the place. Pia said she understands why residents of Barangay Burgos refuse to speak of what they have witnessed in fear for their lives. The details she shared confirmed PNP Chief Director General Oscar Albayalde's statement on Wednesday that the suspects were motorcycle riding gunmen. We think, siempre, it's a premeditated. Hindi siguro naman na rano yung kasi meron sila pang uh, getaway uh, motorcycles. Eh. Earlier on Thursday, members of the investigating team revisited the crime scene to calculate the proximity of the victim from the suspect's position. Police Superintendent Dennis Balia said Representative Batocabe was shot at a close range. Base naman sa ginawa nating ano, reenactment, bali malapitan lang talaga. Malapitan. Meanwhile, Balia confirmed that the gunmen used two types of firearms in the incident. 15 bullet slugs were also recovered from the crime scene. Base doon sa nakuha nating ano, sa ebidensya, yung caliber 40 and caliber 45. The reward money for the capture of the assassins is now raised to 50 million pesos. Daraga Police is encouraging the witnesses or whosoever has the information on the whereabouts of the suspects to come out and help in the investigation while the PNP vow to provide them the utmost protection they need. More than 100% i-assure natin yan. Kasi yun nga, we treat this uh, mga mga informants natin with uh, confidentiality. So yun sinasabi natin. Hindi nyo malalaman, hindi nyo malalaman kung sino, kung ano man yung, yung anong tulong na maibabagay nila sa amin. May Bermudez, UNTV News and Rescue, Daraga Albay. President Duterte vows to personally confront the person behind the killing of Ako Bicol Party List Representative Rodel Batocabe. Duterte also wants Daraga Albay to be placed under Comale control ahead of the 2019 polls following the lawmaker slay. John Nano tells us why. President Rodrigo Duterte visited the wake of slain Ako Bicol Party List Representative Rodel Batocabe in Daraga Albay on Wednesday night. Duterte condoled with the bereaved family and vowed to never tolerate any political terrorism. Duterte also said he will slap and personally confront the politician who was said to be behind the murder of Congressman Batocabe. That I will not allow political terrorism, oppression and intimidation. 
So kung nakinig kayo ngayon, eh, kung hindi ikaw, just ignore it. But if you are the one na gumagawa ng kalukuhan, pinapatay yung mga kalaban, pupuntahan kita dito. Uh, I would personally confront you. Pag hindi tayo nakaintindihan, sampalin kita dito sa harap ng at kung may ebidensya ko, palit ka rin kita. When asked about the identity of the said politician, Duterte just responded with the script statement. So if I say politically motivated, it could be the governor or the barangay party. But my favorite uh, name now is mayor. But I'm not saying who that mayor is. The president also recommended to the Commission on Elections to place Daraga Albay under its control following the killing of Congressman Batukabe. This is to strictly monitor any threats of election-related violence for the upcoming May 2019 elections. The Philippine National Police recently reported that they have recorded a total of 23 election-related killings since they began tallying in October this year. These cases involve Barangay Chairman, Vice Mayor and Mayor. Meanwhile, the National Democratic Front of the Philippines, Bicol, strongly denies the accusation that they are behind the killing of Batukabe. In a statement, the group emphasized that no unit of New People's Army in Bicol is involved in the sad crime. The Batukabe family, on the other hand, hopes that someone will take courage to testify and identify the suspects, especially now that the reward money has been raised to 50 million pesos. Joan Anano, UNTV News and Rescue, Darga Albay. The Commission on Elections is considering to place the municipality of Daraga Albay under Comelec control. Aiko Miguel tells us why. Following the killing of ACO Bicol Representative Rodel Batukabe, the Commission on Elections or Comelec said it is considering to place the municipality of Darag Albay under Comelec control. Comelec said that their statement came after local poll officials recommended this course of action in light of the assassination of Batukabe last December 22, as well as the two unidentified victims that were found dead in the same municipality a day after the congressman was killed. The biggest problem really is that uh, apart from the killing of uh, Akubikol party list rep uh, Rodel Batokabe, may dalawa pang natagpo ang patay the following day. Unidentified pa yung, ta yung mga tao na yon. Based on the rules of the poll body, Comelec takes over the full control of a place if there is a history of current intense political rivalry among contending parties, as such rivalries could motivate people to engage in violent acts. Uh, the fact that the perpetrators are still at large has contributed to the atmosphere of, of uh, well, fear and anxiety in the area. And the uh, concern of our local field officials is that it might lead to an increase in violence. As it is, there is already intense political rivalry in that area. Jimenez also said, if the Comelec has decided to place Comelec control in Daraga Albay, it will take effect in the 13th of January 2019, alongside with the start of the election period. The Comelec NBAC, however, may set the effectivity to any date which it deems appropriate. Ang ibig sabihin ng COMELEC control is that COMELEC will take immediate and direct supervision and control over all national and local officials uh, in, in Daraga Albay. This includes exercising uh, control and supervision over all law enforcement agencies, national and local. Literally, 100% take over yan ng, ng, uh, ng province. Ng, municipality na yon. Comelec will also take into consideration reports and security assessments filed by the Philippine National Police once they decide to implement the Comelec control. Aiko Miguel, UNTV News and Rescue, Manila. The country braces for the year-end storm, Usman. Leslie Dungbowen is at the UNTV Weather Center to tell us why. Yes, Leslie, good evening. Yes, good evening. Tropical depression Usman has further slowed down while moving generally westward. At 3 p.m. today, the center of Usman was spotted at 420 kilometers east 
of G1 Eastern Samar with maximum sustained winds of 55 km per hour and gustiness of up to 65 km per hour. It is moving west at 10 km per hour. Usman will bring rains and gusty winds in Bicol region, eastern and western Visayas and Dinagat Island. Rain showers and thunderstorm will also be experienced in the rest of Visayas and Caraga. Meanwhile, northeast monsoon is affecting northern and central Luzon. This will bring light to moderate rains in Ilocos Region, Cagayan Valley, and Cordillera Administrative Region, as well as isolated light rains in Metro Manila and the rest of Luzon. Tropical cyclone warning signal number one is raised over Romblon, Catanduanes, Camarines Sur, Albay, Sorsogon, and Masbate, including Tikau and Boreas Islands. Eastern Samar, Northern Samar, Samar, Biliran, Leyte, Southern Leyte, Northern, Northern Cebu, including Camotes Islands, Aklan, Capiz, Northern Iloilo, and Northern Negros Occidental, as well as Dinagat Island. According to Pag-asa, Usman may intensify into a tropical storm prior to landfall over Eastern Samar tomorrow afternoon. Sea travel is risky over the seaboard of Northern Luzon, and eastern seaboards of central and southern Luzon and of Mindanao. Forecast shows temperature in Metro Manila tomorrow will range from 22 to 30 degrees Celsius, 14 to 24 degrees Celsius in Baguio City, 24 to 29 degrees Celsius in Metro Cebu, and 25 to 32 degrees Celsius in Metro Davao. Tomorrow, the sun is expected to rise at 6.19 in the morning. That's our weather forecast. Back to the studio. Thank you so much, Leslie Dongbowen at the UNTV Weather Center. Meanwhile, the city government of Tacloban City is set to implement a preemptive evacuation before Tropical Depression Usman makes a landfall on a Friday. Archil Legano explains why. The local government of Tacloban City will open 71 evacuation centers prior to the expected landfall of Tropical Depression Usman on Friday afternoon. Aside from this, Brando Bernadas of the City Disaster Risk Reduction and Management Office confirmed that the LGU has prepared at least 5,000 food packs for families who will be affected by the cyclone as part of the LGU's preparedness efforts. Nag-target kita based on historical profile in 5,000 families na ma-affected ni nga emergency evacuation operation natin. Di rin mangko din mangko sa bagyo, pero maano pa man nangangandaman man kita para in displacement in 5,000 families. Bernadas added that the city's emergency operation center has already been activated. All emergency response equipment is in position while emergency responders are already on standby and will be on duty until Usman departs from the Philippine area of responsibility. We anticipate that natin kay kon Eastern Samar we target very open kon Eastern Samar itong landfall na igugya pong takloban itong sering pasid si itong hangin na usahay dani makurukusog pa Residents, meanwhile, preferred to pack their things ahead of the notice from the local government. They said they will leave right away once the evacuation centers open, especially if strong winds and high waves begin to manifest. Oras na nga nin magkusog na tangin na iskip na kami ito, nga ito kami iskoylahan. Katingin ma, pinanahakot na mita mga gamit. Nahadlok gada ako, kaya siyempre bangin nino gada niyo lang da. Na itak mga gamit din hiwaray na. At na dito may mga bado na lang kami din para sulot lang din hi. Pero diba, sikti na. The local government constantly reminds residents to be alert and heed to authorities' call so as not to be harmed by the upcoming cyclone. Archie Ligano, UNTV News and Rescue, Tacloban City. Filipino music fans in Dubai are in. For a treat in the 90s upload concert set to be held on Friday. Leslie Lungbowen is back to tell us why. Filipino musicians dubbed as the legends of the 90s received a warm welcome from their fans when they landed in Dubai on Wednesday. Singers Kuki Chua, Glenn Jacinto, Leigh Bautista, Naldi Padilla and Wensi Cornejo, who became popular in the 90s, are in Dubai for their 90s Upload concert set to be held on Friday. Music fans are ecstatic to see the said Filipino artists in person and even expressed excitement over the upcoming concert. Ano po, uh, exciting po sa darating na Upload 90s concert kasi po, dekada 90 yun. 
pinakaunan po namin. So masarap sa OFW yung marinig mo yung mga old music, so yan yung mga pang-relax. The artists have expressed gratitude for the warm reception and vowed to make their fans feel the 90s vibe with the music lineup they prepared for the concert. Sa lahat po ng mga manunood ng 90s uptown, maraming 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 salamat sa inyo na expect nyo na lang ang rakrakan ng mga Pinoy icons katulad ni Naldi, ako, si Glenn, si Kuki, at si Lay. So sa Friday, yuyug-yugin namin ang Dubai World Trade Center. Sobrang saya ng aming mga inihanda para sa mga kababayan natin na nagtatrabaho ng maigi para sa mga pabili nila sa Pilipinas. So excited na excited kami. The 90 Upload Concert in Dubai is produced by Wish 107 together with the Verdad Events Management and VIEW. Wish 107.5 innovator Kuya Daniel Razon, who is also in Dubai, invites all Filipinos to watch the concert and once again enjoy the sound of the 90s. We're inviting you all to see us in the, the 90s concert this coming December 28th. That's Friday. And the mga sounds ng mga nasa edad namin. <laughs> Nasa middle naman yun. No? Punta po kayo and uh, invite namin kayong lahat. I hope to see uh, all of you there. The 90s Upload Concert will be held at the Dubai World Trade Center sa Eid Hall 1. Tickets are available for purchase via PlatinumList.net. Leslie Lomboan, UNTV News and Rescue. Up next on Y News. I am not happy with what he did to my man. I am taking this as an affront, affront to my leadership of Western Visayas Police. PNP to file charges against Iloilo 1st District Representative Oscar Richard Garin Jr. and his father, Gimbal Town Mayor Oscar Garin, for mauling a police officer. Labor Secretary Silvestre Bellu III believes employees of the government-run TV network PTV should be established. And two singing hopefuls complete Camp Zuzara's Top 8 Wish Coveries and Wish Covery Season 2, The Singer and The Song. Thank you for keeping me company in the first part of Y News. More reasons behind the stories with Angelo Castro III and William Theo after this quick break. I'm Marina Villamor, Camera. Good evening. Tragedia. Controversia. Aberria. Problema sa inflation At mga kwento ng pagkakaisa at pagbabago Ating balikan ang mga kwentong tumatak ngayong taon Sa Repaso 2018 Welcome back to Y News. We pick up from Marina Villamor Camara left off. I'm Angelo Jago Castro III, and here are the headlines. I am not happy with what he did to my man. I am taking this as an affront, affront to my leadership of Western Visayas Police. The PNP is set to sue Iloilo Congressman Oscar Richard Garin Jr. and his father, Gimbal Town Mayor Oscar Garin, for mauling a police officer. Labor Secretary Silvestre Bello says employees of government-owned TV network PTV4 should be regularized. And get to know important travel tips when going on a vacation. Iloilo Congressman Richard Oscar Garin and his father, Gimbal Town Mayor Oscar Garin, are set to face complaints. Vincent Arboleda tells us why. 
Police Regional Office 6 Director Police Chief Superintendent John Bulalacao said the PNP is determined to sue Iloilo 1st District Representative Oscar Richard Garin Jr. and his father Gimbal Town Mayor Oscar Garin for mauling PO3 Federico Macaya Jr. On Wednesday, Mayor Garin reportedly held PO3 Macaya at gunpoint while his son reportedly handcuffed, mauled, spat at and slapped Macaya outside the Municipal Hall of Gimbal, Iloilo. Si Makaya actually ay pinagpapahinga ko muna but he requested to be reassigned out of Gimbal. Ayaw niyang maalala yung nangyari sa kanya. Wherever they want to be reassigned, i-issue namin sila ng order. Bulalakao said he was deeply saddened of the report and though the congressman already apologized for his actions, the police official said that what happened already caused damage to the police profession. In his apology, Congressman Garin said his action was not directed to the PNP as an institution, but a result of extreme frustration towards one police personnel. In response, Chief Bulalaka, who has jurisdiction of the victim, said, She talked to me yesterday morning eh, to apologize, General, uh, I need to apologize to you because I did something wrong doon sa tao mo sa gimbal. I am not happy with what he did to my man. I am taking this as an affront, affront to my leadership of the Western Police District, Western Visayas Police. PO3 Makaya, meanwhile, had underwent physical and medical examination in preparation for the filing of cases of physical injuries, assault of persons in authority, alarm and scandal, and grave coercion against Congressman Garin, while a case of grave threats will be filed against Mayor Garin. PNP Chief Oscar Albayalde has also ordered the cancellation of all gun permits and licenses issued to Congressman Garin and his father as an administrative action to their involvement in a criminal case involving the use of firearms. Albayalde added that with the administrative sanction, the two officials privileged to own and possess firearms are now revoked pursuant to Republic Act 10591. Therefore, they will be commanded to immediately turn in all their registered firearms to the PNP upon notification. The PNP chief revealed that based on the PNP's firearms information database, the father and son own a total of 19 firearms, including 8 with expired licenses. Vincent Arboleda, UNTV News and Rescue, Iloilo. The House Committee on Ethics may open an investigation against Iloilo. First District Representative Richard Garin for his actions against a police officer. Philippine National Police Chief Director General Oscar Albayalde confirmed on Thursday that the victim, PO3 Federico Macaya, is now preparing the charges to be filed against the lawmaker and his father, Gimbal Mayor Oscar Garin. Mac Macaya was allegedly disarmed, handcuffed, slapped, <coughs> and spat on the face while at gunpoint by Congressman Garin. House Minority Leader Danilo Suarez says a formal complaint should be filed first before launching a House inquiry on the matter. But we need a, a valid complaint from, from maybe from one of the members. Ipapail dito, pero dapat may mag sponsor na isang member. Labor, Labor Secretary Silvestre Bello believes that employees of the Philippine government-owned Television Network, People's Television Network, or PTV4, should be regularized. Rosalie Cos will tell us why. Para sa bayan, this is the famous tagline of the state-owned television channel, the People's Television Network, or PTV. And when it comes to public service and truth, President Rodrigo Duterte wants PTV to be the pioneer. He even envisioned it to be like the international broadcasting network British Broadcasting Corporation or BBC. To better manage public information, a law should be passed, I'm addressing to Congress, to create the People's Broadcasting Corporation replacing PTV4, the government-run TV station, which now aims to replicate international government broadcasting networks. Teams from these international news agencies, I'd like to mention that those interested, BBC, are set to visit the country soon to train people from government-run channels to observe, ito ang gusto ko, total pera naman ng tao, to observe editorial independence. 
through innovative programs and intelligence treatment, analysis of reports, as well as the development of national and international significance. Labor Secretary Silvestre Bello said, for him, PTV reporters must be regularized. This is for them to provide quality service through news gathering. Bilang nakakaalam po ng regulation pagdating po sa paggawa, uh, dapat po bang i-hire as contract of service maging yung mga field reporters? If you ask me as Secretary of Labor, I would make them, recommend them to be regular employees para hindi sila mag-engage sa fake news. However, several administrations have passed and yet there are more employees with contract of service status than the regular ones in PTV. Bellio admits compared to the private sector, government agencies have limitations in hiring many regular employees. Based on the Civil Service Commission, an agency should submit to the Department of Budget and Management a request for the creation of new permanent positions. Those who aspire to be regular government employees must also pass the civil service examination first. Hindi po pwede mong maramihan. Dapat uh, mag-request muna ng position. Uh, Hindi justify bakit kailangan ito. Tapos dapat aprobahan uh, ng DBM. According to some PTV employees who have COS status but refuse to face the camera, they are grateful because they did not expect the management to release bonus or the economic relief assistance after December 25, right after some of them revealed the problems they have with the station. However, they are still hoping that the issue on the regularization will be resolved in which Labor Secretary Bellew supports them. If you are uh, doing that kind of a job, I would rather have you as a regular employee. Oh, pero, siyempre, gagaya ng sinabi ko, uh, hindi, kasi pag submit mo ng budget, may plantilla yan eh. They create plantilla positions. And they try to uh, anticipate kung anong pangangailangan ng agency nila and then submit yung plantilla. Until now, the Office of Presidential Communications Secretary Martin Andanar has neither released a statement nor accepted our invitation for an interview on the issue. Rosa Licoz, UNTV News and Rescue, Philippines. The Red October ouster plot against President Rodrigo Duterte, allegedly orchestrated by the communist rebels together with the opposition group and the continued attacks of the New People's Army against government troops are just among the security issues that the Philippine government faced this year. Let's take a look back in some of the security issues that grabbed headlines in 2018 in Victor Cosares' report. President Rodrigo Duterte revealed in September an emerging ouster plot against him dubbed as Red October. He pointed to a coalition allegedly comprised by the Communist Party of the Philippines, Liberal Party, and some of his staunch critics as the ones behind the plan. The identified groups have refuted Duterte's allegation with Liberal Party denying any connection with the Communist rebels. Although both parties have denied the said ouster plot, the military still insisted that they have obtained documentation from NPA camps they raided to support the claim. They even put in detail the stages of the alleged sinister plot, starting with a massive and violent rally during the commemoration of the Marshall Declaration by late President Ferdinand Marcos in September, and will stretch until their December founding anniversary celebration. October came and went without a hint of the said plot, and while it fizzled out, the word war between Duterte and CPP founding chairman Jose Maria Season continued. The the government also rejected for the first time the unilateral ceasefire declared by the communist rebel this holiday season, citing the group's insincerity to the agreement and only using this time to regroup their forces. The president also hinted at forming a hit squad against the NPA Sparrow unit and ordered the creation of a national task force mandated to decimate the CPP. Aside from the communist rebels, the Duterte government also faced other security issues this year. A string of bombing incidents hit central and western parts of Mindanao that prompted authorities to push for the extension of martial law in the region for another one year. Congress approved the request after security officials convinced them of the continued rebellion in Mindanao as among its reasons. Watch out for the other stories that grabbed headlines this year. In Repaso 2018, a UNTV year-end special on December 31 at 8 p.m. Victor Cosare, UNTV News and Rescue. Philippines.
Meanwhile, many people are still on vacation for the holidays. Let's find out in this report what are the different things needed to prepare when traveling. Accidents and calamities can happen anytime, anywhere, and to anyone. That is why we must be prepared at all times. Here are some of the safety travel tips for those who will travel for a vacation this holiday season. Aside from the blow baguettes, there are some important things to remember when traveling. Experts say that having a go bag is important. A go bag consists of things that a person can use in times of accidents and calamities like flood, landslide, earthquake, and typhoon. Ang vacation naman, ang purpose is to enjoy with the family. Pero hindi yun dahilan para ma mas maging kampante tayo sa kung ano mang pwedeng mangyaring emergency. Lalo na kung kasama ang pamilya, dapat tayo ay mas cautious sa mga emergencies. Setting up a go bag is easy. Get a bag and put all the necessary things inside, such as canned goods and food that last long flashlight and lighter or anything that produces fire and light. First aid kit including medicines is also important in a go bag. A hygiene kit, clothes and tools are also important in emergencies. Aside from a go bag, we must be also ready in case a problem occur in our vehicle. You can go to a car shop near your place and you can find reliable items that you can use in case of emergencies. A battery charger is essential to avoid battery discharge. A cable booster is also important when your battery gets discharged. A cell phone car charger is also handy to juice up our mobile devices. An air compressor will be a great help with flat tires. You can pick up a repellent and put it on your windshield so you can still see clearly the road during heavy rains. A dash cam can save you money because it can be used as evidence after an accident. While on the road, avoid turning on the hazard light because motorists will be confused if you are going to the left or right. Always bring your early warning device. Position the red triangle 4 meters away from the vehicle and the yellow triangle 6 meters away to warn coming motorists. Familiarize yourself to your place of destination such as location of hospitals, police station, and fire stations. Take note list of emergency hotlines such as NLEX and SLEX hotline numbers. Upon arriving in your destination, know first where you can immediately ask for help in case you need it. According to Michael Esteban, a survivalist, all the equipments are important. But this will be put into waste if we don't have the proper skills in an emergency situation. So, meron ka dapat yung knowledge, may apply mo rin siya sa, sa totoong buhay kung, kung kinakailangan. Pero kung hindi mo alam yung gagawin mo, kahit may alam ka, mas may hirap ang kapaling uh, makatulong sa ibang tao. It is important to convince your family and loved ones to undergo a first aid training. It is better to prepare than to regret things. Mon Hokson, UNTV News and Rescue. Two more singing hopefuls will get to continue their Wishkovri journey after last night's vocal battle among the fourth batch of Wishkovri's mentored by OPM singer Tap Suzara. Leslie Longboyn tells us why. The fourth batch of Wishkoveries belonging to Camp Top Suzara clashed on Wednesday night for a slot in the next round of Wishkovery Season 2, The Singer and the Song. Last night's vocal battle was crucial as only two out of three contenders in this batch will get to continue their Wishkovery journey. Giving their all to impress singer which covered Top Suzara were Jofet Osena.
Christian Rosa. And Casey Kalagao. the sing-off, Jofet and Christian were picked as the final two wish coveries, completing Suzara's top eight for the next battle. Never give up on your dreams. Fight for them and continue lang po. Siguro di pa siguro to yung plan na binigay sa akin ni Lloyd. At this point, Suzara believes he has seen and assessed the strengths of his team. So far, kung papipiliin ako ngayon, alam ko kung sino na yung apat ko. So far. Pero hindi... I'm not close to it. Hindi pa ako sarado. That's why now we have another round. Meanwhile, the next to complete their final eight of Wishkovi Season 2 tonight is Camp Venice Saturno. Leslie Lomboan, UNTV News and Rescue, Philippines. Up next on Y News. There will be a strong, deliberate, and orderly withdrawal of U.S. forces from Syria. Very deliberate, very orderly. President Donald Trump defends decision to withdraw U.S. troops from Syria during a surprise visit to Iraq. Another magnitude 4.8 earthquake hit Sicily, Italy. And South Korea establishes simulated town for self-driving car tests. And those are the reasons behind the stories in the second part of our newscast. Y News returns with William Theo. I'm Angelo Castro III. Good evening. <laughs>